Howdy guys, Nation Art here. I'm back again. So this is going to kick off a somewhat new series called The Nature Nerd Storytime. And this is going to be a time where I can just sit back with y'all and tell some of the crazy stories that I've had throughout the past few years, or my life. And these are all going to be stories that, you know, kind of bring you a little bit closer to nature. Alright, so to start off with, I have this great story from two summers ago, whenever me and a couple friends went to Florida. So my friend Ahmed came to me and was like, hey, let's go to Florida. So of course I said yes, as well as my friend Francisco. And so Ahmed flew to Florida because he was a little claustrophobic and didn't want to sit in the car. And me and Francisco drove for 24 hours from Houston to Miami. <laughs> and so normally when people go to Florida, right, you know, there's a lot of drinking and a lot of partying, a lot of laying on the beach, you know, and drinking a martini, maybe go surfing. I don't know what pe normal people do in Florida. I'm not a normal person. What we did is we camped and we spent a lot of our time in the Everglades and the surrounding parks. And we were just looking at wildlife, right? And especially uh, all three of us were reptile people, so we were all looking at reptiles. So there are many stories I could tell you from this trip. It was a seven day trip, jam packed full of adventure. But I'm going to just tell you about one right now. So we're going to skip to day five. And over the first five days and everything, Ahmed had decided that in our campsite, you know, if you put a tent, uh, two tents underneath a tarp, then that's basically a tent, right? Because, you know, it's a tent is just tarp. Whatever his reasoning was, um, that's his reasoning. <laughs> Uh, we got kicked out of the campsite, was the long story short, with, you know, two nights left. And so we were sitting there thinking, like, well, what should we do now? Because, you know, I have two nights here, don't have a place to sleep, kind of need a place to sleep. So, there is this, uh, abandoned looking, I'm not sure if it was actually abandoned, but nobody was there. Um, but there, there's this campsite down at the very far end of the Everglades uh, by Flamingo and I suggested hey let's go camp there right let's go camp at Flamingo now keep in mind that Flamingo there are crocodiles um, there are alligators there's all sorts of wildlife because we're a mile from the coast we're as far into the Everglades as you can go we're as far away from civilization as you can be in Florida um, you know, without being in the ocean. So there were no no lights anywhere around. The stars were absolutely beautiful. Did y'all know that Florida is the only place in the world where both crocodiles and alligators live together or in the same area? And that's, of course, the American alligator and the American crocodile that live there very on the tip of Florida. So I suggested this, and Ahmed uh, thought it was a great idea, right? And Francisco said nope and Francisco got a hotel <laughs> um, which, you know I can't really blame him the mosquitoes were absolutely horrible um, but anyways so we dropped Francisco off at the hotel it were in my truck I had driven there right and then me and Ahmed go uh, start driving to Flamingo and you know it's about 10 o'clock at this point and so as we're driving, it's you know already dark outside, and we're road cruising as we go, looking for snakes and stuff on the road. Um, it is a national park. We didn't touch any of the snakes. We let them be. Took pictures. Back then, I wasn't great at taking pictures. So I don't have any great pictures of snakes to show y'all. <laughs> but we saw a lot of cotton mouths. We saw some water snakes. Um, some scarlet snakes. It was it was a really cool place to be. Right. Anyways, we're driving, and we uh, we see up ahead like that there's actually a forest fire. Well, that's not good, right? So as we're driving, you know, we drive past the forest fire. It's a little bit in away from the road, and there's a ranger, a park ranger, parks there. Everything, right? And he he had already burned back the fire. And for those of you who don't know, burning back the fire means that you burn away the area that the fire would have spread to before the fire spreads to it um, in a controlled light burn and that way 
the fire has nowhere to spread to, and so it's trapped in this circle or area wherever it's burning. Um, so they had burned it back and everything, and they were the ranger was out there monitoring it, watching it die down. Um, so you know, we we stopped and we're like, "Hey, what's going on?" And so the ranger, you know, explained that he had burned it back. Uh, they were just watching it; it was nothing to worry about. Okay, that's cool. You know, so we're just gonna drive past the forest fires. So hopefully, it doesn't spread farther. All right, so we finally get to Flamingo, and we find a little camping spot. And me and Ahmed, we get out. Mosquitoes are absolutely horrendous. He's covered head to toe in mosquito repellent. I'm not a huge fan of it, so I went without and just suffered the wrath of the mosquitoes. So we get our tent, and we get it set up, and we get all our stuff inside. And we get inside the tent, and I go to close the zipper, and the zipper breaks. So now mosquitoes are flooding in by the thousands, and just eating us alive. And so me and Ahmed quickly abandon the tent, and we run back to the truck, which isn't that far away from the tent, and we get in, and we go around, you know, 40 miles an hour, windows down, AC blasting, we get out all the mosquitoes, we pull back up to the camping spot and we regroup. And Ahmed looks at me and he's like, all right, I'm gonna go set up our other tent. I'm like, cool, you do that. I'm gonna sleep in the truck right here. I was done with the mosquitoes. This is about midnight by now. And so Ahmed goes and sets up the tent. I leave him to fend for himself. And I lean back as far as I can and get ready for an uncomfortable night's sleep. So, eventually fall asleep, you know, after hearing the thud, 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 thud uh, of me killing mosquitoes on the roof of my truck, because they would come in through the AC. It was wonderful. I loved it. Every minute of it. <laughs> well, so I finally fall asleep, and around 4 a.m. I wake up, and I'm super groggy. And I can't see out any of the windows because, you know, it's fogged up and it's pitch black outside. Um, we were actually in a new moon. And so I can't see anything. But the truck is rocking back and forth. It's a 4 a.m. brain. It's like, man, this is a lot of rocking for raccoons. Like, more than I could rock it. Three times as much, even. I'm a big dude. So I started thinking of other things that could be. I'm like... Is there a gang of people outside that's waiting to kill me? This is a weird thing for a gang of people to do. I mean, it is Florida. It was kind of made sense. I was like, huh, no idea. And I'm still awake, like I'm still waking up and everything. And I can't see anything. I don't want to roll down the windows. Solely because of the mosquitoes. No other reason but the mosquitoes. So I decided to turn my truck on and back up and swing my truck around with the headlights to see if I can see anything, right? So I turn, turn on the truck, and I turn on the brights, and I back up. And of course, Ahmed's tent was maybe 5 to 10 feet in front of the truck, so I turned on the sun for him, which definitely woke him up if he wasn't up already. And, uh, so I come back, and I'm looking around, and I don't see anything. I'm like, oh, that's weird. I still didn't want to get out. Because of the mosquitoes. And I hear this low growl. This really low growl. Oh, I wonder what that is. It sounds like a crocodile. For Amber and you can't judge me for this. And, you know, there were crocodiles at our place, to be fair. Not that they make that sound. Or anywhere near that sound. Um, but yeah. For Amber Brain was not the brightest. So, again, I'm like, Man, that'd be really cool. I should get out and look for the crocodile. But mosquitoes. Again, this is my sole reason for not getting out of the truck. Was the mosquitoes. They were so bad. And so I, uh, you know, I can't see anything. So I pull back in. And I go thump, 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 thump. Killing mosquitoes. And eventually I fall back asleep. Now, I'm going to tell you Ahmed's perspective before I finish the story. So from Ahmed's perspective, I had just turned on the sun, right? And so there's 
this really bright light. And so he wakes up and he's looking around and he sees this dark shape running across the field. And this, I, I swear, this is how he tells it. He says, man, Jackson must have really had to pee. And then he saw what it was, right? And he's like, oh my god. So, he gets, um, he doesn't get out of the tent because he doesn't want to get out of the tent. Um, probably half, at least half of that was because of the mosquitoes. And the other half was probably because of the thing he saw. So, he falls back asleep. I fall back asleep. And around 6 a.m. I wake up and I get out of the truck. Um, I didn't, really didn't want to because of the mosquitoes. So I get out of my truck and I go wake up Ahmed. I'm like, hey, let's pack up. Let's get out of here. And Ahmed looks at me. And he's like, did you see the bear last night? And it clicked in my mind. I was like, oh my god. But so I go around and I look. And sure enough, there is a big old scratch on the side of my truck that was not there the night before. Um, a black bear had tried to get into my truck. And the only reason I didn't get out of my truck was mosquitoes. So if that doesn't sum up Florida in a nutshell, I don't know what does. We had a bear try to get into the truck. A bear. Pretty big bear. But, you know, whatever. So I'm like, okay, well, that's cool, I guess. It makes for a cool story. Um, nobody got hurt. So the bear was just doing what the bear does. So we, uh, we go back, and, you know, there's no service out there or anything. Uh, so we finally get into service and call Francisco and say, hey, we're coming to get you. You know, he's still safe and sound at the hotel. I bet he had a wonderful night's sleep and everything on a nice bed. And the next night, I'm not going to lie to you, all three of us slept in the motel. Uh, we did not want to deal with the mosquitoes or the bear again. If you like this, please like and subscribe for more. Um, I'm going to start trying to put out more consistent videos. Um, there will be a few story times like this one. There will be some animal videos, uh, both native and exotic, coming up. And I hope you all had a good Christmas and New Year's. Alright. Have a good one.